Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Chen's Medical Videos. In this video, I will discuss how to interpret the levels of serum creatinine and EGFR in your lab report so that you can determine how well your kidneys are working. First, I will briefly summarize the multiple functions of kidneys in human body. The kidneys help remove from human body toxins or drugs, extra fluid, and wastes such as urea, creatinine, and acids. The kidneys help control blood pressure and produce the active form of vitamin D calcitriol to maintain healthy bones. The kidneys make erythropoietin that stimulates the bone marrow to make red blood cells. They control the acid-base balance of the blood. People with the following conditions are more likely to have chronic kidney disease and should be checked for kidney function periodically. Diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, overweight or obesity, family history of kidney disease or kidney failure, older age. Since mild kidney disease usually do not cause any symptoms, lab test is the only way to detect early kidney impairment. The most common test for kidney function is the blood test for serum creatinine. It is usually included in a test of basic metabolic panel or complete metabolic panel. This slide illustrates the report of basic metabolic panel. The serum creatinine and the EGFR, which stands for Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate, are underlined. Creatinine is a waste product from the normal breakdown of muscles in your body. Creatinine is excreted from the body by the kidneys. When the kidney functions are impaired, they excrete less creatinine, resulting in the elevation of serum creatinine. The EGFR, or estimated glomerular filtration rate, is calculated based on a person's creatinine level, age, gender, and race. Because race is a contributing factor to the estimated GFR, the lab report gives two different EGFR depending on whether you are African American or not. The EGFR estimates how much blood is filtered through the kidneys per minute. As kidney disease gets worse, the value of EGFR goes down. Another test for kidney disease, which will not be discussed in this video, is a urine test for a protein called albumin. Albumin is leaked into the urine when the kidneys are damaged. Depending on the GFR level, the chronic kidney disease is classified into five stages. Chronic kidney disease is defined as persistent kidney damage, or GFR below 60, for at least three months. As shown in this table, if your GFR is at 90 or above, and if you have kidney damage, such as leakage of albumin or red blood cells from the kidneys, you then have stage 1 chronic kidney disease. You will have stage 2 chronic kidney disease if your GFR is between 60 to 89 with concomitant kidney damage. As chronic kidney disease progresses, the value of GFR goes down. The worst stage of chronic kidney disease is stage 5 when the GFR is below 15. The eGFR level reflects the kidney function more accurately than serum creatinine level. Because eGFR is calculated based on a person's creatinine level, age, gender, and race, the eGFR or kidney function varies among different people with the same creatinine level. This table illustrates an example of the difference. A 22-year-old African-American male with a creatinine of 1.2 has an estimated GFR of 98. He has stage 1 chronic kidney disease if he also has chronic kidney damage. A 58-year-old white male with the same creatinine level has an estimated GFR of 66. He has stage 2 chronic kidney disease if he has concomitant kidney damage. In contrast, an 80-year-old white female with a creatinine of 1.2 has an estimated GFR of 46. He has three, stage 3 chronic kidney disease 
due to her decreased GFR. Currently, the National Kidney Foundation is promoting a new risk-free calculation of eGFR. Thank you for watching. I will continue to make medical videos relevant to your health. Stay healthy and see you next time.